Thank you, Cliff, Maui, and Alma, for the wonderful sharing that uh, reinforces the belief that change starts and ends with me. So, um, listening to them, I said, gosh, I have to unlearn a lot of things. Um, I was tasked to share with you this afternoon how three things come together. Talent development, that's really a buzzword uh, in our organizations. Uh, organization capability is an aspiration. And coaching, we've talked about coaching um, as being person-centered. Um, uh, also, the, the, the process of asking questions, uh, the impact to people. What I will do is to go to the context. I will talk about the context for for coaching, uh, the environment, the opportunities that are given us uh, to serve as coach, perhaps uh, in the whole range of uh, directive to non-directive, um, but nevertheless opportunities to make a difference. So the title is Connecting the Dots. You know, we attend conferences and we see all the studies, uh, the findings of studies, we see frameworks and so forth, and we ask ourselves, how does that all make sense to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis? So I I'll share with you uh, a few of this, and I will draw from my experience. Uh, I've had the privilege of, of having a blended experience uh, heading HR for IBM in the Philippines and Ayala Land, and also uh, consulting, consulting in the area of transformation and uh, um, enabled by executive coaching. When we say organization capability, there are a number of ways of understanding it. My fave is really how they pull it and looks at it. And in the context of organizations, where we hear about revenue, um, talk about revenue uh, targets, uh, efficiencies, they talk about new products and services, they talk about new processes, they say talk to the global process owners, talk to subject matter experts. HR practitioners and leaders can get lost. And I shocked my, my clients or my um, internal and external clients in saying that all of these things that we're talking about is not sustainable. So they say, where did you hear that from? And what proof do you have? Because our board of directors will not hear of such a thing. But then we have evidences and evidences of this that the, the more lasting source of advantage is really organization capability. And, and Dave Ulrich, I mean, this was his early, uh, his early uh, uh, work. And Sonny Coloma and I were teaching this subject at AIM years ago. But it still makes sense to think about this, uh, this particular, or, or to have this perspective. So what they're seeing is that organization capability is the ability to create unique competencies whatever they are, and not to be so, and to be, not, not to be so in love with them that you cannot change it with the, demand, the demands of the market change. So the two words there is you create these competencies that gives you advantage, and then you adapt to changing markets. So, and how does this translate to action? So and that's why I like this model of organization capability, because it tells us exactly what. <coughs> And this is where HR comes in, is to translate it in having a shared mindset. What's the vision? Um, what's our um, values? What's the culture? And then management and HR practices. We will not go to the detail about investors in people or human capital index of Towers Watson talks about practices that make a difference. So, um, capacity for change. So that is something to be aspired for, is to have the resilience uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to change as the situation calls for it. And the last is 
workforce leadership. So what we're saying is, if a company um, um, uh, is removed from the list of uh, top top 500 and so forth, what this is saying is that it can rebuild itself, even if it loses its products, even if it loses its. Uh, capitalization because there will always be partners who, can, who might want to come in to invest um, if you have organization capability it's a more lasting source of advantage nobody can copy that unless they hire everybody and make them behave in a way that your organization has done and how does this translate to customers so if you have this main shared mindset for customer service your customers uh, can experience responsiveness and service quality. So um, that's organization capability. Now talent development. Talent development builds organization capability in many aspects. So uh, th this particular framework, most of you are familiar with this, it's the Deloitte Comprehensive yes, Talent sir. Management Framework that looks at all the areas. And you know, a lot of us are really challenged with talent acquisition, right? They give us all these metrics. I recall in IBM, they would say, you know, you have to ramp up the organization and grow it like, so many thousands uh, this month or else. You know, global is going to hit you uh, if you don't meet that. And you look at all of the recruitment process and show and tell me where the showstopper is. So that's how they talk. But when we look at this whole framework, you can see, just looking at the dots, that all the, the areas that we put dots on are relevant to organizational capability. Because you're building a mindset, uh, you're building skills, that's what we're saying. And then some of them are directly related to talent development. We have the learning and capability. The learning and capability development and leadership dev, which is direct. And then the others are, um, it could be your training needs analysis, performance management could be your DNA or your development needs analysis, your DNA, uh, because it tells you what the performance gaps are. So, so all of this, talent development areas, builds organization capability. But why did I put an arrow? at the top is that we need to make sure that we strengthen the alignment to business. You know, because that's where we actually think about the three talent strategies of, um, of build, um, borrow, and buy. You know, uh, because they say, oh, this is the kind of people that you want to have. Uh, and it's not just quantitative now. A lot of the uh, development strategies and plans look at specific competencies as well. Do you agree with that? So it's not just the number of heads that we're looking at, but specifically uh, the kinds of competencies these people have. Uh, in fact, I found a very interesting subject that said everybody's afraid of the VUCA world. Everybody's afraid of the VUCA world. And they're looking at external uh, or new entrants to their industries. And there aren't too many. You know where the VUCA world actually opera op is operationalized are in companies, existing companies that reinvent themselves. Thus lies the challenge to ask each our practitioners and business leaders to constantly refresh our organizations and look at their talent. In the next slide, you see here, still on the Deloitte, you know, Bersin and Associates were bought by Deloitte. So in this particular slide, we see organization capability as being level four. You know, what does that mean? Um, it, it shows that we may be performing talent development uh, at the level of uh, um, specific processes or specific professions or functions 
Um, and then we move up to uh, the level of, uh, of, of um, teaching them about um, improving performance, how to improve performance, so that could be a program as well. But as far as organization capability is concerned, it has a, a total view of the organization and requires a multifunctional uh, uh, involvement and with a change leader no less than the CEO. Because he looks at the whole organization and, and sees what kind of, of uh, organization can thrive in the future. And how can I bring all my company members to that future and do they even want to be with me? Um, finally, this next slide on Deloitte um, shows us the actual investment made by, by uh, organizations. So um, when they surveyed what it was, what factor contributes significantly to improving the performance of a company, so it's not an individual performance question, is what factor will make your organization succeed or improve in shareholder value or, or market share. Everybody said strategic leadership development, people development investment. That's the number one uh, answer that everybody gave. But the reality is that it is found one way. Most of the money go to buying programs uh, off the shelf. Or, or, or adhering to, well, we need to adhere to global process owners uh, uh, standards. But a lot of it is, is concentrated on professional development, on process improvement, uh, and so forth. So um, what could be an example of a strategic leadership development? Uh, I had the opportunity to work with a client. I just finished this project recently. Uh, what it entailed, uh, as an example of a strategic leadership there, is to ask the CEO, what are the business drivers? So he identified five business drivers. That's step one. Then two, the consultant we partnered with, I defined the competencies that were relevant to the business driver. The third step, using assessment center, we assessed all 14 of the ex against those business drivers and competencies. So they would say, oh, I don't feel too well. You know, like, must I go to this assessment center? I'm senior vice president. You know, or I'm feeling dizzy. Or, you're asking me to choose between closing a deal or, or going through this assessment. Uh, but nevertheless, they all went. You know, whether it's directive or did I ask them the question of what is it to you if you don't attend? Um, but they all attended. They went through it. And then uh, the results were presented in a mosaic form, one page. Mosaic because you have the business drivers and then you have the competencies and it's color coded how many of those executives are ready today to support the business driver. So green, blue, red. And they were flabbergasted to see a lot of reds. Okay. Um, more so when we did the next in line because the successors also, also showed reds. So now you ask the question, is it built? borrow or buy. So there's a lot of thinking uh, to this. So the next step is coaching. So this information was given back to them and they were shocked, humbled, and I found myself just keeping quiet as they took it all in. Some were very competitive. I mean, these were graduates of Ivy League schools and they want to know who got the higher school. Or are you sure I'm not the number one? <laughs> okay. 
or, or somebody even warned me, you'll be surprised at my results. Okay, so that's how confident they were. And he almost flunked the finance, financial document part. So the, the first thing he said, I should go to AIM and take a financial course. So, so with that feedback, then came development planning. So that's where the strategic development plan comes in because it's based on the business driver and then it's blended. So it's not just classroom training here, but mentoring. I want to be mentored by that person in the, because this is in the context of a conglomerate. I want to be mentored by that person. Or boss, can you give me an, an assignment that would strengthen my business acumen? So, um, okay. So that's the point. So let's now move to a more compelling study because it's it's recent. It's 2018. And I'm referring to the IBM C-suite studies. So every two years, IBM conducts the C-suite studies. What's the C? CEO, CIO, CFO, CHRO, Chief Mark Manufacturing. And, and what they do is they pull in a large number of participants. And in the case of this Chief HR Officer study, it involved 2,139 CHRO globally. Okay, and they asked, you know, so there were a number of things that were talked about in the study. There were three. First, how, what came out is we need to design an open culture, exponential learning, and making way for change. So I'll focus on the exponential learning because it is relevant to leadership then. The three top five areas that this chief operating officer identified as requiring change have to do with or are relevant to, to leadership development or talent development. How employees are given feedback, the type of training that's given them, and how they're identified and selected. So these are three opportunities. I talked about the context for coaching and uh, leadership development. These are three opportunities for you. We now go a deep dive a little bit on it. Okay. And I think um, either Maui or Alma mentioned it about there's a disconnect of people thinking that something needs to be done. But then there's a disconnect with what they're thinking and what they're saying, with what they're doing. Okay, so, so that's what happened here. In the aspect of exponential learning, all the CAOs wrapped investment in people management and talent management or talent development as the number one factor to accelerate performance. Yet only 50% of the CHRO say that we have those skills today. Then the other one is that skills are fast becoming the new competitive currency. So now the competition is really like, what do you know? Okay, uh, what do you know? So in the BPO, for, for example, we evolved from BPO to KPO, Knowledge Process Outsourcing. And uh, I, I saw that, or experienced that evolution. Um, in IBM, for example, where cost arbitrage is no longer <coughs> the deciding factor. It's what do Filipinos know that can add value to large, to large clients like Procter & Gamble, So, uh, and digital skills, they say, is very important. We have only 11%, this is just last year's survey, only 11% say that they have data science, machine learning, and AI in their organization. So, there's a disconnect, you know, and, and it's an opportunity for us to address. Uh, the growing, there is also a growing emphasis on interpersonal skills. Uh, and continuous learning, knowledge sharing, and personalized learning. And uh, Maui and uh, 
uh, Alma and Cliff mentioned this as well, that there is a constant challenge to align personal and professional realities or aspirations, is to ensure in our way, own way that we integrate people, you know, because they can be professionals by day and family people by night. So we need to, to integrate uh, these people. And, and these findings of the IBM C-suite studies echoes Deloitte's observation. Because you saw that Deloitte was saying, there's hardly any money put on strategic talent. So my last slide is, it's sort of four contexts that I found myself doing my best to make a difference. The four contexts for coaching in organization transformation would be first coaching for organization transformation, coaching for performance, coaching for skills training, and coaching for development. Um, as a consultant for for org effectiveness, I find myself often starting with this context. Of, of building commitment to lead change, you know, like asking a lot of questions from them, um, and then making them realize through their own answers. And actually, one of the things that I learned is to keep quiet a lot of times so that they can hear themselves talk. So they just talk, you know, and then executing the change and then reinforcing the desired culture. Uh, the other context for coaching uh, and development would be coaching for performance. So um, in the last client I had where I spent four years, four years with a client, yes, I had what I call the Stations of the Cross. There were 14 members of XCOM. And then I would do my rounds, round robin, and, and just sit there, you know, and uh, and then they start talking about some of their aspirations for their divisions. Um, and and I recall when I came in that they had a lot of uh, of uh, clicks, you know, and and my marching order was to just create uh, just one click or one organization. And the last would be coaching for skills and coaching for development. So finally, coaching connects the dots of talent development and org capability. It connects organizations and employees. It connects the professional and personal aspirations of employees to assure the future. There is much to share, and I'd like to add by saying that as I grew older, perhaps less threatening and kinder to people, I finally understood the essence of coaching. And that really hits the heart of every person. A good coach will make people see what they can be rather than what they are. So let's make a difference where we are and find those coaching opportunities where we can build people up and give them bright futures. Thank you very much.